Yo, what's going on, good people? This your boy CDL Shorty. And as y'all can see, I'm back at a truck stop. So, hey, look, man, I want to tell you guys, you know, my experience with going through a heart transplant, right? Tell you guys the signs and the things to look out for, right? So, I already, I've already told you guys about your high blood pressure, shortness of breath, dizziness, nausea, numbness in the arms, everything of that nature, right? But what I do want to tell you guys is the process. You know, first of all, you got to get put on a heart transplant list. In order to do that, you got to get go through a workup with your doctors and everything like that. All right? Can't be a, can't be a smoker. You got to lose weight, you got to be compliant, you got to be willing to show them that you care about yourself and you care about your life. All right? So then after that, once you get approved, you go through, they put you in a hospital or depending on what status you are, uh, they might, you know, let you stay at home and wait at home. Me, the whole left side of my heart was uh, clogged up. Well, not clogged up, but it was dead. So they put me in the hospital immediately, right? One thing I want to suggest that you guys get done, the way that you can actually tell how bad your heart truly may be is you need to get one of two things. You need to get a right heart catheter, which is where they go in the side of your neck. They put a catheter all the way down into your heart. That's going to tell what your true venous pressures are, all right? Or you could get a catheter through the wrist. And that's also gonna tell what your venous pressures are. Your venous pressures are the venous electrical cords that go into your heart. So with that being said, they'll be able to tell you if you're in stages of congestive heart failure or not. Another way you'll be able to tell is press on your leg if you feel if you see a dot and if you rub it and you feel it then you're in early stages of congestive heart failure another way is take your neck look all the way to the left get somebody to press on your stomach and there's a vein right here and if that vein pops out that means you're full of fluid and you may be in early stages of congestive heart failure all right i had all of those so they did the right heart cath put me in the hospital put me on the list I was waiting on a list for two months, two months. And, um, you know, it was hard. It was hard. You get, you get in that hospital and they put you on that impeller pump. The impeller pump 5.5 saved my life. Um, but it was hard sitting in that hospital waiting. I walked as many laps as I could. I worked out. I changed my mindset. God blessed me with, you know, my wife. God blessed me with some friends, some family and a man named Jorge that actually helped me get through with what I was getting through. Once I sat down and had a true conversation with him and with God, I changed my mindset and I started working out and I stopped feeling sorry for myself. I also had to wrap my mind around the fact that somebody had to die in order for me to get a new heart and get out that hospital. That's hard. But guess what? Thanks to that person, that person was an organ donor and they allowed me to live so now I got to live through them I got to make sure their legacy carries on but when you go through there you got to be willing to fight you got to show willpower you got to show love within yourself your family your friends everybody all right now some signs I'm giving y'all the game giving you the playbook that was given to me passed down to me so it's only right I pass it down to y'all so when you go through the heart transplant, I don't know if you guys know this, but they do have to crack your rib cage to get to your heart. They got to cut your rib cage open. They keep you incubated for 24 hours, a whole day after the heart transplant. All right. So after the heart transplant, then you're going to have a tube down your throat. You're going to have a tube down your nose. The, 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 the tube down your nose is a feeding tube. That's how they're going to be able to feed you for a while until you can be able to swallow. They give you a, a swallowing test to pass. If you can't pass that, they're not going to take the tube out your uh, nose. 
the pain. It's inevitable to go through this pain. You're not going to be able to skip the process. See, this is why, going off subject a little bit, but this is why I get on a lot of the scammers here in trucking. I get on Alice Good Energy, Box Truck Shorty, Sheldon the Box Truck Coach, Compass Circle, and uh, uh, um, whoever else want to take shortcuts. With this heart transplant, you can't take a shortcut. You cannot skip the pain. My uncle went through it. I was scared. I was nervous. I called him one day. You want to know what the first thing he told me? What makes you so special to think? No, he said, he said, this is what he said. He said, you think you're better than me? I said, huh? What do you mean? He said, do you think you're better than me? I said, no, sir. He said, what make you think that you can skip the process? What make you think that you can skip everything that I went through? The waiting, the pain, the nausea, all of that. You got to go through it. God got to take you through some pain for you to grow. And heart transplant, trust me, it is the biggest heart surgery you can ever have. And it come with a lot of pain. But with good nurses and good pain management, you can make it through. And that's what happened to me. Also with people that advocate for you. My wife advocated for me. Because it was a day, it was some days I was in some pain and I couldn't talk. But I suggest if you ever go through this process, you and your spouse or family member would not come up with sign language. That's what we came up with. Through a friend, it was passed down through me through a friend, that idea. So when I was in pain, right? When I was in pain, I would hold up my fist. And that meant that I was in terrible, terrible pain. Got some pain medicine. After that, the pain started to subside. Now, not to scare you guys, because heart transplant is an awesome, awesome thing. It's a gift of life, but you gotta go through the process. Part of the process is some of the medication that put you on, you're going through hallucinations. You may go through some, uh, you may be backed up, stopped up, or you may have chronic diarrhea. And of course, you're gonna have the pain. But you can make it through. You are stronger than you think. I promise you. You can make it through. But you got to dig deep down inside and find that dog in you. All right? So after you and your spouse or your family member come up with the hand signals to let you know if you're in pain, then you need to stay on top of that pain so it don't hit you. Me, one day it hit me because I tried to get off of because I was constipated. 7 o'clock that night, ooh, that pain hit me. And I was playing catch up, so don't ever try to play catch up with the pain, okay? Another thing, chest tubes. Chest tubes hurt. They don't really hurt, they sting. But make sure you're very, very careful because they go all the way up into your lungs, they're stuck inside of your lungs. They're to help you get fluid out of your lungs so you don't get pneumonia or whatnot after surgery. But chest tubes, let me show you what the scars look like. This is me being vulnerable and trying to help somebody else out that may go through this later on in life. And you got to get you a shirt too, by the way. But these are what the chest tubes look like. Chest tubes uh, places look like. When they get ready to take them out, after you're done with all the drainage and everything and they get ready to take them out, guys, make sure you take one oxycodone an hour before they take it out. They're going to cut the stitches that's around it, the sutures, they call it. Then after that, make sure you hum. You want to hum like your life depends on it. The humming actually helps with the pain. It'll feel like a little sting, bee sting. All right. So make sure you hum like your life depends on it. When they take that right heart cath out of your neck, make sure you cough. They'll tell you to cough. Make sure you cough like your life depend on it. If not, it could cause a blood clot when they take it out. I'm just telling you guys everything I went through. All right. Now, out of heart transplant, you're not going to want to walk. Your body is going to feel weak. But guess what, guys? You got to get up and walk at least once. It gets better and better each and every day. Each and every day it gets better and better, but you got to get up and walk. 
You got to get up and walk, even if it's a lap. Then another guy that uh, actually came to see me before I had my heart transplant, he had one two years ago. He put me up on game about your legs are going to feel weak. And if your legs start feeling weak, what you need to do is start walking around the room. Walk from the bed to the bathroom, the bathroom to the couch, couch back to the bathroom, the bathroom to the door, from the door back to the bathroom, from the bathroom to the bed. You know, just do that. Build up your lower body. Because what you want to do while you're on the impeller is you want to walk as much as you can. They call it prehab. Now imagine you build yourself up 100%. When you have this surgery, because it's such a big surgery, this surgery will knock you down to 10%. Your legs are gonna feel weak, they're gonna feel like jello. You're gonna have shortness of breath a little bit because you just got that surgery. You're gonna need every bit of that 10% to make it through. And the mindset, heart transplant is 80% mental, 20% physical. But you gotta have the willpower. You gotta have the willpower, you gotta fight. You can never give up. You can never give up. That's why I said I'm on people like Alice Good Energy because they take the easy way out. They give up when it comes hard. They take the easy way out in life. <clears throat> they take the professionalism out. It's easy to go buy a truck and put a driver in and say, I don't need a CDL. But what if you can't find a driver and that truck is sitting? You need a CDL, my friend. They made it easy. They made this industry look easy and it's not. So don't ever listen to people that take the easy way out. I almost took the easy way out. But I had to dig deep down the side and God sent me some family members, some friends and my wife. So don't ever take the easy way out. You in pain already, get a reward from it. Then, what Mr. Walter from the box truck couple talked to him, he told me about the chest pillow. This is what you get after heart transplant. You get the heart pillow. And what you wanna do is, when you're coughing or whatnot, or you're sneezing, you wanna hug this pillow because it helps the chest. It help you not put a lot of pressure on the chest. So you wanna hug this pillow. This is your best friend. And as you see, I got all the nurses and everybody to sign it for me. So guys, go get yourself checked out. We all know you can't be a driver out here without a proper medical DOT card. You go to a DOT physical and they tell you you got something wrong, please don't be like me. I ignored my health. Please go get yourself checked out. And if you just so happen to find yourself in a situation that I was in and you needed a heart transplant, I'm here with you. I went through it. This is living proof that there is life after transplant. I know it's scary. I know it's tough, but you can make it through. You got this. You got this. I know you don't want to be a human pincushion for a while. I didn't want to either, but for two whole months I was. I had a sacrifice. So just sacrifice. You got this sacrifice for yourself, your family, your loved ones. Everybody love you, but you got to love you. So, hey, if you're not an organ donor, please think about it. Please consider it. Please talk to your family about it. If anybody out there that is an organ donor that's watching this, I thank you. I salute you. You helped save my life. So I personally thank you. So, guys, don't be scared. Get yourself checked out, all right? From one trucker to another, y'all see I'm back out at the truck stop, right? From one trucker to another, I just want to tell you I love you. Thank y'all for trucking with me. And be safe.